topic to be dealing with that of celestial persons who have many of the attributes that a human person has and they see, they touch, but yet to the natural eye, we do not understand to know these persons. So it's in a third world that we come to know them and in a, in a world of spirit. In today's lesson, which is marked in your teaching uh, syllabus as lesson uh, number two, <clears throat> relative to the reality of angels, there are 13 points to this lesson. And there are four pages of uh, college notes for us to consider. In the introduction, it says, we are taught that a supernatural being, not human, stays close to those who fear the Lord, who love God, uh, who have a relationship with God. It says, and that we are delivered through that being. That uh, if we have a problem, uh, if we have an onslaught against us as a person, uh, that we have a, we have a second line here. That we can rely upon these, uh, these persons called angels to assist, bless, and help us to conquer any power that is not, not, not uh, relevant to our well-being. He says, uh, do we believe, I think we should say truly. <laughs> Sometimes we get assent to a thing that we're not sure of. And we should give a little thought to that. May, there may be a number of doctrines in the Bible that we give assent to uh, that we really truly uh, do not have a comprehensive knowledge of them. And, and so we should give some real thought to that. Uh, do, do we actually, that's maybe a better word, uh, believe in the, in the ministry of angelic creatures who, whose residence is in heaven and their messengers, as we shall learn today, uh, to us here on, on planet Earth. And it says, do, do you feel close? Have you ever felt close to an angel? Uh, that would be a very difficult question to ask people because sometimes we get the daylight scared out of us who wish there were six angels, you know. And, and so it, it could be that we have a, a knowledge of angels without an experience uh, with angels. Now the Bible is the only uh, textbook uh, that, that gives a, pers uh, a perceptive knowledge uh, and insight into this invisible uh, force or, or, or persons that we have functioning around about us, made, created by God and placed uh, as assistance uh, to our well-being. The Bible is the only known source. Now, there, 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 there are people that write things by the imagination, which we cannot follow. And there are people who, who say they have had personal revelation, of which we cannot follow. And so uh, the Bible is our textbook regarding uh, spiritual creatures or heavenly, uh, heavenly creatures. And uh, what do we really need to know is their relationship to the ministry, through the ministry of angels, to human persons. What is their relationship uh, to us? And so we begin by looking at Psalm chapter 34 and verse 7. In the book of the Psalms, Psalm 34, says, The angel of Jehovah encampeth round about them that fear him. And so we learn immediately that Jehovah has an angel, God has an angel, and that that angel <coughs> resides and stays close to persons like you and me as the born-again people. 
and that if they're in a, in a problem and in a trouble and in a sorrow, it says, and he delivers them. He delivers them. And so if they're in a contest of strength or, or, a, or a battle, then he steps into the thing and, and helps them. This means it would take some study and, and, and would take some, uh, some prayer uh, to understand a world uh, like a, unto that world. So let's begin with point number one. What are angels anyway? And as we look into the word of God, we find that they are what we call spirit beings. They are not natural beings like you. They're not terrestrial being, beings. They were not made on this earth and do not necessarily belong on this earth. And that when they come to this earth, they're visiting. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are beings that have to do uh, with an angelic world of spirit that belongs to, to God himself. They inhabit the, the, the spiritual world, possibly around us, of which we are, we, most of us are not aware of. Now in both the ancient languages of, of Greek and, and Hebrew, uh, these, the word that's translated angels, and down in Latin America they often name the family after angels, angelos. And sometimes you see a place of business called <laughs> Angelo's. Wouldn't that be a nice? Angelo's uh, Pizza Shop. Nothing to do with angels at all. But anyway, an angel, an angel means a messenger. And a messenger is a person who has been sent by another. A messenger is not a person carrying his own his own ideas, his own literature, his own information. Uh, a messenger is a person that's bringing a message to you that someone has delivered to him to deliver to you. And he says, these persons do not bring their own story. They do not bring their own truth. Uh, they deliver messages from the Trinity. They deliver messages from God to us. And now as you look throughout the Bible, in so many places, uh, you will find that to be correct and to be true. Your number two point says angels are celestial uh, persons and that they are immortal. Let's look into that. Um, an angel never gets old. I see your eyes get big now. How many wish you were an angel already? Yeah, some of us look like it. Look like we need that, that spin back the wheels and and not, and not they do not get old they do not get weary uh, there are three things that bind you to this earth one is time and one is space and one is energy these three things confine you to this earth they do not have any of these three they are not confined by time they never get old they are not confined by space they can be in more than one place at the same time. And they can be, by thought, clear across the ocean uh, in a moment, in a second of time. And so they are not confined as we are. We people that are made of the earth, earthy, uh, we are confined to this earth. These persons are not confined to this earth. And the things that bind us to this earth uh, then they they do not uh, they do they they do not to come under that direction, and they are not confined to the same confinements that we are. And and so he uh, he lives in another domain, heavenly one. Uh, he lives uh, a, a separate uh, from the from the limited world in which you and I find ourselves related to every hour of the day. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 20 and verse 36 says, Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels. Which means the angels cannot die, you see. And they are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. So when we are resurrected from, uh, when, when the resurrection of the dead takes place, we will be similar to angels. 
and that we do not die and we do not, and we do not get old. But of a different category, uh, the angels look upon us and wonder because we, we are those who have been uh, made new by the power of God, have received new persons in, within us and have shed the humanity of this earth and made to be uh, like, like a glorious creature like the Lord Jesus Christ after his, after his resurrection. Let's look at number three. You'll find that at the top of page uh, number 10. How many have a teaching syllabus? Let's see your hand. Good. Uh, if you're going to learn, you have to work at it. Uh, the only way to stay stupid is don't learn, you know. Uh, and and uh, if you just listen, you pick up a little of it. At least you know we're talking about angels. But if you're going to study the subject, and if you're going to make it a part of you, if you're going to make it something inside of you that you're going to reach out to and persist in, you, you need to, uh, to take it very seriously. So many of us do not take the things of spirit and the things of God very seriously. Uh, we take very seriously how we dress, what we eat, what we drive, and so forth. Now, we take that very seriously. But when it comes to the supernatural, we take it very casually, unless we get into big trouble. And if we get into big trouble, we call on everything in heaven to come on down here and help us in a hurry. Angels, and point number three, they are the ministers. Uh, they, are, they are ministers to God and to man. They do what God tells them to do. They were created uh, to be a, a minister under the Lord. And God loans them to us and that they, and that, that they can serve us also. Uh, angels, they hear the voice of God and they obey God. Uh, when one does not obey God, he is removed from heaven and becomes one of the fallen angels. And there are, we don't know how many. Lucifer was a fallen angel. He brought with him a third of the angels of heaven. And they're all fallen angels. So they have the ability to make a final decision on whether they want to serve God or not to serve God. In the Psalm, number 103, verse 20, it says, Bless Jehovah, you his angels, uh, that excel in strength, uh, that do his commandments, hearkening under the voice of his word. Now here's a revelation. I can assure you that David did not get this accidentally. I'm sure he did not get it from any kind of a book that in, in his prayer time, in his devotion time, that something came from heaven to him and it says, bless Jehovah you his creatures, creatures, his messengers. And he says, you that excel in strength. One of them can put a whole, a whole army to flight of natural, of natural people on this earth. And, and, they, and that do his commandments. Not only do they have great strength, they obey what the God that created them tells them to do. Hearkening under the voice of the word of God. Now he says... Uh, Uh, in your be here. And it is difficult. I'm not trying to tell you it's an easy thing. It says, we, I shouldn't say just you, all of us, we do not walk alone. Put a circle around the word alone. You cannot imagine the millions of people right now that feel alone on the face of this earth. People play with spiritism because they're alone. And they seek something. One day I'll tell the whole story of Charles Haddon Spurgeon's daughter, who after that great preacher died, spent the rest of her life trying to find him in the spirit world. And when she came to me to have devils cast out of her, she was an old witch reared in a parsonage, reared with a man that studied the Bible 12 hours a day. And here she reached out for across the limits of human knowledge and, and began to seek after 
heard all kinds of quirks and quums and mutterings and voices out there trying to find her father who was going to be with God. Of course, she never did find him. But when, when I was in Scarborough in England holding a crusade, here came this witch to the door. An old woman looked awful. And I said, who sent you here? She said, Dr. Sangster from the Methodist Church. And he became rather famous 50 years ago as a writer for the Methodist Church. And it says, uh, he listened to my story. And he said, there was only one person in town, and that was you that were visiting in town that could help me. I don't know how Dr. Sangster found out anything of my being in town or, or anything else. Uh, but... But I sat and listened to her story, and I cross-examined her to see if she was the daughter of the famous Charles Haddon Spurgeon. And uh, I was convinced that she was. And I laid my hands upon that woman and cast the spirit of divination out of her. How did she get into it? Looking for companionship. People that run into church like a donkey and run out like two donkeys and don't ever speak to anybody, you're wrong. You're selfish. There are people that come to every church service and they're lonely. And they just wish somebody would even shake their hand and smile. Are you here? They, they, they sometimes live in a, a one-room situation. And they don't have anybody to talk to. Their lives are, are destitute friends. Their friends are all dead. God help us to love one another and to care for one another and to look around and see who we can shake hands with. And all the people said, you don't rush into church and you don't rush out. You know, we're not a theater that is over now and get out of here. No, we are not. We, we are a body of Christ, joined together by the Holy Ghost. And we need to understand this. And all the people said, we don't walk alone through this life. God does have his representatives. He does have his angels. And, and, and they are delegated to assist you and to bless you and protect you. When I read a verse like that, I look back through my life and see how many times I could have been killed. How many times I could have died. Somebody must have been around, you see. And maybe I haven't given the lengthy time of, of observation that I should have uh, into angelic functions and operations. Although we have had some experiences in various parts of the world that are, that are so thrilling on the inside of us. I'm sure we could have had more. And I'm sure all of us could have had more. Now look at Psalm 91, verse 11. It says... For he shall give his angels charge over you. God will delegate one of these beautiful persons that he has created in heaven and say, now listen, you take good care of them. You watch them. Don't let them stumble and fall. Uh, encourage them. Sometimes we have encouragement that we can't see with our natural eye. I oftentimes have wells of joy flowing up out of me and I want to say, where'd you come from? <laughs> How did you get in there anyway? We have assistance in this life. Uh, as far as I can tell you now, there's only been one or two times in my life that I can remember right now where I have truly uh, been depressed. If you see me any day, any time of the day, normally I'm just about the same. You know, I'm not away up there and hide you, squealing. But I'm never down in the basement groaning either. There's a place that we can walk with God and be in perfect serenity and perfect joy. And all the people said, He shall give His angels charge over you, and they will keep you in all of your ways. And they shall hear, and they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Now we've come again to that man David. 
if you only read the book of Psalms and uh, picked up the word angel, every time it's in the book of Psalms, you'd have a book. Here was a man in his devotions. Here's a man in his prayer life communicated and God spoke back to him because in the New Testament, it says that David was a prophet of God. And so here was a person, uh, here was a person with a, with a tremendous relationship with God. And he says, I want to tell you something. There are those helping you that you can't see with your natural eye, you can't hear with your natural ear, but they're there, blessing, inspiring, and, and loving and caring. But if you pay no attention at all, you may not get to know them. If you're so overwhelmed with carnal, natural things that pass away, you might miss the spiritual things. I hope at the end of my life, God won't give me a solid rebuking of saying, you gave so much time to nothing uh, until I was not able to bring into your life the experiences I wanted to and the knowledge of uh, the supernatural that I wanted to because you were so overwhelmed with little things that pass away. And all the people said, in Jesus' name. I wouldn't want to get into this in the wrong way, but so often times, uh, in the jungles of the world, they have a closer relationship with the supernatural than we do. Of course, it's not a, it's not a positive supernatural, it's a negative. It's a negative supernatural because they don't know anything about the positive. Like the witch doctor told me in uh, South and, and in South Africa, uh, he said, now I know there's a great big God out there, but I'm so afraid of him, I don't know what to do. So I don't approach him at all. But I approach these gods, and that was the stuff he had made there. Uh, his image is horrible looking. You've never seen anything. With a hip here about five times too big on this side. And with a head on one side too big. Uh, they were the most distorted looking creatures. And he says, these I'm not afraid of. Th these will help me to get to where I want to go. But the big God out there, I'm afraid of him. Isn't that just like the devil? Isn't that just like the devil? To have you to be afraid of the loving father who wants to wrap you in his arms and care for you and to have his messengers. Some of you people are too young to know much about it, but when I was a boy, this, the, the Western Union was in full force. If you got anything that was of an unusual communication, uh, it was a Western Union. And almost every boy looked forward to getting him a bicycle and being a Western Union boy. And all his job was was to deliver messages from one part of the city to the other, from downtown in the Western Union office, out to the home or the office of somebody else. He was a messenger. And the Lord tells us that we have these messengers connected with the, with the throne room of heaven, and their job is, is to bring us something. Aren't you glad they can do it? They can bring us something. And we say, we, we appreciate it. He should give his angels charge over you to keep you, and they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. So they have been sent to help Christians. In Hebrews 1.14, it says, it says, and are they not all ministering spirits? And they have been sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. And so uh, he says, that's who they are. This is the great apostle Paul. It's beautiful how it moves from the Old Testament to the New Testament with the same truth, with the same strength, with the same power. I, I would say uh, that to all of us, that the, the greatest thing that we can do is to, in our prayer life, tell God that whatever messenger. You say, but how will I know whether it's a, an evil spirit or a good spirit? His spirit abides within us. God's spirit abides within us. And no counterfeit can come and take the place of the real. Jesus said, my sheep know. Say no. My sheep know my voice. And, and so if we know his voice, then we are sure can you say amen? amen? We are sure. So may the Lord 
uh, help us and, and teach us and keep us. A D under that, uh, Jesus became a man so he could understand our problems. He understands our sorrows. He understands our heartaches. He understands our weariness. An angel has never been tired, so he don't know anything about what we're talking about, but Jesus does. So in Hebrews 2.16, it says, For verily he, t he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. You say, why? So that he could understand all of us as to what we need and that he could bless us. So that's an introduction to this. There are 13 points to this one lesson. And uh, we have finished three of them. That's pretty good for me, isn't it? <laughs> 